Okay, we continue on our exploration of areas under the curve, but in this video we're going to focus on <coughs> uh, better approximations and some notation. And the notation can be kind of messy and new, so it's probably, uh, this is a good one that you might want to pause, think about, write things down, rewatch, um, and read. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's go back to the same example that we keep looking at, and that was the area under the curve, f of x equals 1 plus x squared, bounded by the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. And in one of our videos, we, wa we looked to see, we broke the, we estimated the area under this curve by looking at three different rectangles. And we uh, hypothesized that the area was not a very good approximation, but would probably be better if we looked at six rectangles, or perhaps ten rectangles, or perhaps twenty rectangles. But what we're going to do in this case is look at n rectangles and see how the notation can be written in terms of the endpoints and um, an arbitrary number of rectangles. Okay, so in this case, remember our interval is negative 1 to 2. And remember that the left endpoint is going to be x sub 0, and the right endpoint should be x sub n, if you are breaking this up into n rectangles. Alright, now let's see what that actually would mean for each of those pieces. Well, first of all, how wide, or what's the width of each one of our rectangles? Well, remember what we did in the last case. We took the length of our rectangle, so 2 minus a minus 1, and we divided it by the number of rectangles. So in this case, 3 over n. Now that's going to be the change from 1x to the next, so we're going to call that delta x. That is our change in x. Right, so we had x sub 0 here, then we would have a delta x before we got to x sub 1, then another delta x, we got to x sub 2, then another delta x, so we got to x sub 3, and this distance delta x is determined by the length of the whole interval divided by the number of rectangles. <coughs> okay? Perfect. <coughs> so if I had an arbitrary interval, we'll say from a to b, just like we have from negative 1 to 2, then delta x, so the change from 1x <coughs> value to the next is going to be the length of the interval, b minus a, divided by the number of rectangles. Right? That's going to be standard in all of these problems. The length of the interval, so in our case, uh, 3, because that goes from two, or negative 1 to 2, divided by the number of rectangles. All right? Good. Now, x sub 0, remember, is always a. Well, x sub 1 is going to be whatever that left endpoint was, a, plus my first delta x, okay? Then x sub 2 is going to be a plus delta x, right? It's, we've moved, so if we're at x sub 0, then we, do a, we move delta x and we land at x sub 1. Well then, x sub 2 means we go from x sub 1 to x sub 2 by traveling another delta x, which means I go from a to delta x to another delta x, right, or plus delta x plus another delta x, or a plus 2 delta x's, right, 1, 2. x sub 3 is going to go from x sub 2, and then I'm going to add a delta x to get to x sub 3, or I can think of it as starting at a and going 3 delta x's. So x sub 3 is a, so my left endpoint, plus 3 delta x's. Perfect! Okay, I could keep going down in this process. What do you think x sub i would be? So some x value in, in between. It's going to be a plus how many delta, x, delta x's? We should have i of them, right? Just like I, here I had three of them, here I had two of them, here I had one of them, here I had none of them. If I have x sub i, then I'm going to have i of them. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so what is the area of one of my rectangles? Okay, remember, we decided that the area was going to be about the sum of the areas 
of the n rectangles, okay? And how do I find the area of r sub 1? Okay, well, let's move that up just a little bit. r sub 1 is going to be the base of that rectangle, which is going to be, what's, what's the base of that rectangle? It's just going to be that change in x, so delta x times the height of that rectangle. Well, it's going to be, we looked at a case where we used the right endpoint, right? In which case it would be f of x1, or we looked at the left endpoint, in which case it would be f of x0. We could actually pick the middle point, which we couldn't call either one of those, or we could pick any point in here, any point in this interval we could use to, to create a rectangle. So we're just going to say that it is f of xi star, okay, where xi star is some point in the ith interval, okay, in x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. And I know that notation can be scary, but that's like x sub 0 to x sub 1. That's the first interval, right? The next interval would be x sub 1 to x sub 2. That's the second interval. So the ith interval is x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. And x sub i star is going to mean any va x value in the ith interval. It could be the right end point, it could be the left end point, it could be the midpoint, it could be any point in between. Okay? So that's going to be our generic notation. Wonderful. So then our area is about equal to the sum of all the areas of the rectangles, which it, which that sum is delta x times f of x1 plus, I'm sorry, f of x1 star plus delta x times f of x2 star plus all the way out to delta x times f of x n star. Okay, now we're going to introduce a new notation, and that's sigma notation. So this area is going to be about equal to the summation, so this means summation starting at x equals uh, 1 up to, I'm sorry, not x, i equals 1 up to n. So I'm going to have n rectangles, delta x times f of xi star. Okay, so this just means I'm going to sum from 1 all the way up to n, delta f of x i star. It's equivalent to what I have written right up here. Okay, I know that is scary notation, so let's look at a really quick um, expansion of sigma. If I wanted you to sum up i equals 1 to 3, delta x f of x i star, then that would mean it would be delta x f of x, I start at 1 star, plus a delta x times f of x 2 star, plus delta x times f of x 3 star. And I stop because I'm only summing up from i equals 1 all the way up to 3. Okay, so that's what that notation means, which in itself can be kind of scary. So let's go back to that example where I was looking at the area under this curve from negative 1 to 2, negative 1 to 2, f of x equals 1 plus x squared, and let's see if we can create the area formula given in rectangles. So I have from negative 1 to 2, which means my a is negative 1 and my b is 2. My delta x we've already figured out is 3 over n. Good. My x sub 0 is negative 1 x sub 1 is negative 1 plus 3 over n, right? That's 1 delta x. x sub 2 is negative 1 plus 2 delta x's. And we could keep going until we get to x sub i, which is negative 1 plus i 
delta x's, which we may write as negative 1 plus 3i over n. So that's what x sub i is. That's the right endpoint of the ith interval. Okay? Let me write that down. That is the right endpoint of the ith interval. Excellent. Okay, so remember the area is about equal to the summation of i equals 1 up to, I'm doing n rectangles, of delta x, right, the change in my delta x times f of x i star. Well, I'm going to use right endpoints, so if I use right endpoints, then that means my area is about equal to the summation of i equals 1 to n. Delta x, remember, is 3 over n. And then f of x i star is really f of negative 1 plus 3i over n because that's the right endpoint of the ith interval. Okay? Now what that's actually equal to is the summation of i equals 1 to n. 3 over n, and f of this is 1 plus negative 1 plus 3i over n quantity squared, right? Because that's what my function says. It takes my input, adds 1 to it, and then squares this piece right there. Okay? We're going to stop there and take a breather.